up, we are now joined by NBA champ. Boy, that's fun to say. Cantavius Caldwell Pope, congrats on winning your first championship. How does it feel to be walking around this week and have everyone say, champ, 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 champ? <laughs> uh, I mean, it feels great, you know, just to uh, have that name attached to mine. Uh, I kind of uh, went home first after the bubble. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, to be around family, especially my, my boys that I missed for three months. Uh, and that's all I was hearing. You know, it, it just it feels it feels a it feels wonderful. How long does this last? How, how long do you celebrate for? This is number one in year seven. Hopefully you get some more before you're done. But how long does the celebration last? Because it, it usually varies with players. Uh, I don't know. You know, for for me, I was ready to you know to to go again. You know, <laughs> that just that that feeling of having, you know, just to play, uh, you know, be with a group of guys like 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 I had. You know, it, it was fun. You know, and I was ready to go, you know, right away. But you know, uh, I don't think it uh, the party and, and enjoying the moment lasts long because of this uh, how the season uh, has went this year. Uh, and the time we're going to start back. So I feel like we, you know, we enjoy the moment that we have and, and get back to it. Hey, you got to hang on to this, right? No parade, but you're celebrating with family in other ways. And I have to compliment you because you're wearing a shirt, unlike several of your teammates who I think <laughs> J.R. Smith, once again, second time around for him <laughs> as a champion, I still don't think he has put a shirt back on. He took that shirt off. Uh, during your guys' game six, before it was even over, and <laughs> yeah, as far as uh, I've uh, seen, that shirt has not come back on last. yet again. So, congratulations! Not only a title, but being fully clothed. We really do appreciate <laughs> that. I will say that Lakers fans can sometimes be a tough crowd to please, right? And it's not just you. I want to play some sound from Danny Green. This was after he missed what would have been that game-winning three back in Game Five of the NBA Finals. Take a listen. It's a basketball game. You know, people are emotional. Fans are emotional. I hope they don't take it that seriously. I hope that they're that passionate about voting or getting justice for these people who deserve the justice. You know, we'll get some better change along the country, but so it's a basketball game in the day. And I know that they're just taking out their emotions and they need somebody to blame and came down to that last play. And of course, I'm, I'm the easy target. I thought it was so interesting what he said there, not just that part, but actually what I thought was even more interesting, he said, it doesn't bother me that much because he said, I've been conditioned by Lakers fans all year and throughout the bubble being critical of me. You had Lakers fans critical of you, frankly, since the moment you signed that contract. How tough has it been to weather that storm to get to this point and then have everyone turn around and be so happy with you during this final series? Um, I, I feel like you know, LA fans they they have their expectations, you know, of of the, of their team, you know, and, and I respect that. Uh, you know, they hold you accountable, you know. Uh, so I just feel like you know they 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 real die hard fans, you know. They they expect you to be at your best, you know, because of the organization. You know, you in LA, you know, it's, it's the Lakers. Uh, you know, uh, Kobe is, is you no know, is. is has ran the town, you know, the team for 20 years. So they, they, it's a high expectation from the fans, uh, and and I respect that. I always tell people when they come and play in L.A., it's so much more than basketball. Obviously, being mm -hmm. a Laker is on the biggest stage. You're under a magnifying glass, and your every move is, criti uh, you know, critiqued on and off the court. Um, you know, obviously, I started off on the wrong foot coming to L.A., you know, with the ball <laughs> fake with Kobe. And when I tell you I got death threats and you better never show your face in L.A. and all that, but, I, you know, obviously I won the crowd over. You've been able to win the crowd over with your play, mm -hmm. but it makes it that much sweeter when you've had to hear it all year and then you finally get to hold up the trophy for a city that at the end of the day really loves you, but they don't settle for anything but perfection. Yeah, and I, and I, I, I can say it's like a love-hate relationship. You know, they they be on you. They, they, they expect your best, you know, uh, and... And they, they love you regardless, but they expect the best. Absolutely. You seemed really comfortable in the bowl, but particularly in the finals. I think you played great. Uh, you were definitely one of the sparks. But w when I was talking about the bowl, I said it's probably going to help the youngest players the most, mostly the, the Miami Heat, because they're not going to have to go and come into L.A. And, and know what it's like to play in a, in a game five crowd going crazy, screaming at you. Um, how did you feel and how comfortable were you um, in that bubble playing, that, considering there was really no crowd there? Um, I felt very comfortable, you know, uh, I felt like it was, 
less uh, less distractions, you know, uh, where you can just really focus in on a game. You know, uh, you can hear uh, calls from the bench if the coaches is like basically, you know, calling from the uh, bench. Like if with the crowd, you know, it's, it's hard to hear when when the crowd is really like, you know, mm-hmm. going. So I felt like it was for me, it was less distraction. I could focus and get the job done. So you have a player option with the Lakers next season, and it is officially the offseason. Now you're going to have to start to make some of these decisions. You could probably get not just more money somewhere else, almost double somewhere else, but playing on a championship team has a lot of value. Playing in L.A. has a lot of value. Are you planning on returning to the Lakers? Uh, it, it was nothing in the world that I, I, I wouldn't – I would love to come back, you know, to the, the defend the title, you know, that – like I said, that moment of just holding that trophy up, you know, gave me, you know, more motivation and, and inspired me to, you know, try to get it again. But, you know, I do have that option. You know, I'm going to leave it up to my agent to handle that side of the business. And like I've been doing for seven years straight, I'm just going to worry about my game, you know, keep perfecting that. Well, worrying about your game has certainly paid off. Congratulations. I, I, I cannot tell you how happy I am for you. The idea of what you sort of battled through and, and focused and the way that you worked, I have watched it every day. I got to see you up close even more in the bubble. So impressive, the contributions you made to that team in the finals. And you are very much an NBA champion. We're going to look forward to seeing what you do next, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.